This is 5-Minute Power Platform, where I'll be doing short experiments in Dynamics, Flow, Power Apps, Azure, and more. And in this one, our second of two parts, we have a special guest to serve us now. In the first part, we used Dynamics 365 Contact as a trigger. When a new contact was created, we created a new incident in ServiceNow. What we found in part one is that when we created the new ServiceNow incident, we populated the caller with the full name of the contact record. And if that name didn't exist in ServiceNow already, then that required field on the incident would be left blank. And so that's the problem we're going to solve in this second part. In this part, we're going to add a little more logic around that. We're going to check to see if the user already exists in ServiceNow by looking up their email address. And then we'll make a choice. If they do exist, we'll find their username and create the incident for them using their username. If they don't exist, we'll create a new user in ServiceNow and then create the incident for that newly created user. So let's go through those steps. So to do this, let's get our flow back in edit mode. So scroll up to the top here and uh, click uh, edit flow. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to add some logic after a record is created that's going to look up the contact by email address within ServiceNow and either create a new user or pull the username for the user that it found. And so to do that, we're going to create a new variable. And this is going to be the ServiceNow username that we're going to use to populate ServiceNow. So that's going to be a string type, and we'll leave it uninitialized. So next, we're going to look up user records in ServiceNow based upon the email address of the contact that was created. So to do that, we'll create another ServiceNow action, and this time we're going to list records. The record type is going to be users. And then here we're going to add an encoded query. So this is the query language that ServiceNow uses. And we're going to say that the user record must be active and that the email address must equal what's specified in Dynamics. So we'll bring in that email as dynamic content right there. We only want one return. We only care if one exists or not. We don't want to deal with duplicate email addresses. And then we'll add a condition. And so the condition is going to be checking, did we get results or not? And so to do that, we're going to use some expressions. And so we're going to look at the length of the collection that was returned. And so that's the result element from ServiceNow. And we're going to say, is that equal to zero or not? If it's equal to zero, then we didn't find a user and we need to create one. If it is, then we found one and we'll pull the username from that. So to do that, we'll populate our variable, our ServiceNow username variable, with the user ID that was returned from ServiceNow. So now we've got one path of our condition populated, and I think it's a good time to test it out before we work on the other side. So to test out that side of the condition, we need to find uh, an existing record in ServiceNow and create a contact with that same email address. So let's look in here on page two. Uh, Any approver looks like a good candidate, so let's go create a new contact record as any approver put in her email address, and before we save it, we're going to trigger our flow to test. So we'll say, I will perform the trigger action, save our contact, and now we should see flow pick that up here in a second, and we see green check marks all the way down. So here it found any approver, and we see her username there, pull the right side of the condition, and then we see that her ServiceNow username was populated properly. So now let's work on the other side of the condition. So now we need to establish a username that we can use to populate a newly created service, ServiceNow user record. And so we'll pull, do that by taking everything to the left of the at sign in an email address. So in order to do that, we're going to add a compose action. And the compose action will allow us to use some, uh, some functions on the string. Let's add in compose here. And then we'll go to expression and we're going to use index of. And index of will find the location in a string of a specified character. So in our case, we're going to add in, from the dynamic content, we're going to add in the email address. You have to use see more in order to see it. It doesn't automatically show it to you. And then we're going to use an at sign in single quotes. Don't forget the single quotes if you're used to other languages. And that'll tell us where in that string it finds the first at sign. So we'll just give that a name so we can remember that. So we're going to use second compose action here in order to pull off the first part of the string now that we know where the at sign is. And so we'll add in another expression in here. And we're going to use the substring function. So let's flip over to expression. We'll choose substring. And then it gives us a hint there. And so the text that we're going to search is from the dynamic content. We'll choose the email address. And then the length, we'll put in zero for the start. Remember, these are zero by strings. And then we'll the output from the find the at sign will be the end point. And so that'll give us the, uh, the first part of the email address. 
Now we'll populate that to our ServiceNow username variable, and then when we create a record in ServiceNow, we can use that, uh, we can use that output there. So our final step is to create the user record in ServiceNow. So to do that, we'll add an action using our ServiceNow connector. We're going to create a new record. The record is going to be of type user. So I'll type in user here, pull that down. Now let's start mapping Dynamics fields into ServiceNow fields. So let's see, we can start with business phone. We've got that in Dynamics. Uh, name, we'll choose full name out of Dynamics. Employee number, got that. And then let's see here, user ID, we'll pull that out of our variable that we've created. We've populated it above us. Let's see, first name, uh, email address we've got, of course, and then last name, that should be enough. Last name there. So let's save that, and then let's take a quick overview of our flow before we test it out. So coming up to the top here, when a contact record is created, we're going to initialize a new variable, and then we're going to use the email address from the contact to query the active user records in ServiceNow. Now, uh, if we find one, we're going to pull the user ID on the right there, and if we don't find one, we're going to uh, populate a new user record, and, then and at the end of both, we will create a new incident in ServiceNow. All right, so to test this out, let's first test it out with an existing user in ServiceNow. So let's pull, search for users. Uh, let's see, let's grab someone off the second page. And uh, how about this one here? So we'll take his email address, and we're going to create a new contact with it. And then be careful not to save, actually. I want to trigger my flow to test before I save. And then once the flow is watching for it, now I'll save my contact. And hopefully we'll see some green check marks. Looks good. Green, green, green. And then it, it took the right side of the conditional. So let's see here, what do I get? I got his username out of ServiceNow, took the right side of conditional, set my variable with his, his username, and then I should be able to see now an incident for him in ServiceNow. There it is. So now let's do the same with a new contact, someone that isn't in ServiceNow, and this should take the left side of our conditional. We'll also fill in some additional data for Sam Samuels here, just so we can see that move across into the ServiceNow user record as well. So now, once again, we'll trigger our flow for testing. Say I'll perform the trigger action, and then go back in and save our contact. And hopefully, again, we'll see green checks in the left side of the conditional. So we've got some checks. Along the left-hand side, we see it found the at sign, the 11th position, and pulled out Sam Samuels under the beginning of the email address, populated our variable, and then created a new user record. Let's go over to ServiceNow and make sure we can see that. So we'll search for Sam. There he is at the top. And then down below, too, we see that it created the incident for him. So we'll come up here to the instance. And let's uh, pull off that filter, and we see that he's got his building access request there as well. So with that in, well, not quite five minutes, but we've added some more logic to our uh, first part of creating an incident so that we can make sure the user exists or make sure they're created before we create the incident.